Good evening everyone, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers update tonight, the 13th of January 2013. A lot to get through again tonight, the tropics are very active, so let's get into it. Looking at the tropics over the past 24 hours, and we can see uh, Tropical Cyclone Norel uh, starting to weaken out now, uh, should weaken out reasonably rapidly over the next uh, 48 to 72 hours as it continues to push south-southwest and then followed by a southeast turn. It may graze the southern part of WA, it won't do so as a cyclone certainly, but it may do so as a low, so it might increase a little bit of rainfall here over southern parts of WA, which is probably good news in the middle of summer, uh, and considering how hot it's been in, in parts of WA, so uh, this could be a bit of a bonus for you. But look, we'll talk a little bit about Cyclone Narelle, but we won't devote too much time to it tonight because uh, the effects on land now will be minimal. This is the next area of development we're watching, you can see this cluster of storms and convection pushing towards the west it should form into a or has formed already into a very weak circulation but should form into a bit of a stronger circulation in the Timor Sea drift to the southwest still a lot of variability into whether this becomes a cyclone um, there's some model thinking today is starting to back off the idea of this being a cyclone uh, or at least back off on the intensity, uh, possibly pushing towards the southwest as a tropical low or weak cyclone, uh, followed by a second system that might come off the coast around uh, around the Kimberley, and that one there also may form into a cyclone. Look, this area here looks very quiet at the moment, but I tell you what, this is a nice little spot to watch over the next seven to ten days, just to see the strength of the monsoon developing over the next two weeks. You're really going to see it best in the Gulf of Carpentaria and Western Cape York Peninsula. This area is going to cop an absolute battering of rain um, and you're going to see an explosion of convection over the next seven or, or particularly in the next four to four to seven day period. Uh, you're going to see some massive amounts of convection. Coral Sea still reasonably inactive. Good news for the Coral Sea is that it's getting better in terms of its wind regimes. The northern parts of the Coral Sea still seeing a fair bit of wind shear or fa fairly strong northwesterly upper level winds, so nothing coming towards the coast if something did decide to spin up. Uh, but overall, the Coral Sea is starting to become more favourable, particularly towards the end of the month and early in February. All right, that's the overview. Let's get into the nitty gritty with Norel. Well, the Bureau of Meteorology are no longer issuing official advices on this system. They're just issuing tropical cyclone information bulletins. But we can see very similar tracks between the BOM and the JTWC. So we're just going to show you one in the interest of saving time. This is a Joint Typhoon Warning Centre track. And we can see the system's going to push towards the south-southwest, well off the coast, uh, then push to the south and then start to recurve back to the south-southeast. At this stage, it's still expected to not hit the coast of southern WA. Listen, if it is going to hit the coast of southern WA, it's not going to do so as a tropical cyclone. It's going to do so as maybe a weak low or just a, a, a few showers and a couple of gusty or a little bit of gusty wind. That's about it. At this stage, very unlikely to even do that. But the good news with WA is the southern parts at least, you may see a little bit of shower activity just on the eastern side and a little bit of a convergent airflow um, from the surface into the upper levels. So um, you might see uh, what, the, what the Bureau basically call upslide. We're not going to go into what that is, but you, you may see some rain in the southern parts of WA from the system. Latest infrared, 6.30pm Queensland time. Still see a fairly ragged eye, but still reasonably well-defined tropical cyclone there. So still suggesting it's packing a bit of a punch. Maybe not as much as it was 36, 48 hours ago, but it's certainly not dead with yet. Once we enhance the infrared, we see the eye pretty clearly here on the, on the imagery, just in the centre of the circulation there, uh, and we see the banding coming in, wrapping around it in through here. So there's certainly a good circulation still evident on, on all of our imagery. However, as I say, it has started to weaken. Really clear evidence of that weakening is in the microwave imagery and we can see here uh, what looks to be an eye wall, um, what looks to be sort of like an outer eye wall even uh, before the eye in here and a very, very uh, intense band of convection there and an intense band of conv convection on its western side. But overall, look, the, the system has lost a lot of structure. There's very little to its east um, in terms of its eye wall. So uh, it's not, not far away, I would suggest now, from a reasonably rapid weakening phase. Uh, 
If we look at the moisture level around where the circulation is tracking, it's tracking in a southerly direction from where it is. You can see it there nicely, nice and clearly, well off the coast of Exmouth. Um, going to push towards this region. Now this region is going to have very, very limited amounts of moisture in the atmosphere. So, you know, it's got a whole bunch of things working against it. As we said last night, you know, it's got wind shear working against it. It's got dry air working against it eventually. And it's going to have sea surface temperatures that simply can't sustain a tropical cyclone. Uh, so by the time it does decide to push a little bit more towards the southeast, uh, and even if it does start to head towards the southern southern WA coast, it's very, 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 I won't say it won't, but it's very unlikely to do so as anything that resembles a tropical cyclone. Here's our dynamical models. Our dynamical models push the system basically due south from where it is now, uh, a little bit further away from the coast because the coast sort of moves in a, in a south-southeast direction, uh, south-southeast, north-northwest uh, orientation. So overall, look, the system, as I say, completely unlikely to, to hit the coast as a cyclone or anything that resembles a cyclone. And look, no, most of the modelling don't even have it hitting the southern part of WA. They've got it pushing well south of that. So that's where we're going to leave Narelt. Very interesting system, but at this point in time, and probably will never now affect the coast directly as a tropical cyclone. Okay, that's where we le we've left Narelt, but let's have a look at the next one. So or the next possible one, I should say. Currently, there are no other significant lows in the western region. A weak low is located 10 south, 130 east. The low is expected to move to the west-southwest and may enter the western region on Monday. And the low may develop into a tropical cyclone on Tuesday or more likely Wednesday when conditions become more favourable. Its potential for development will be monitored over the coming days and obviously being given an increasing potential as the days go on. Now, the modelling here is not as clear as it was, say, 24 to 48 hours ago. There are some models now suggesting this thing won't spin up into a cyclone. Most still do suggest it will be a cyclone, but the potential or probabilities have dropped slightly from, you know, a very, very high amount to, to you know, more of a 50-50 chance uh, of, of this thing developing into a cyclone. Let's have a look at what the models do actually show. All right, and we're going to start with probably the most aggressive model when it comes to tropical cyclone formation because it's also normally the most unlikely scenario just on the fact of the of the fastness of development or rapid development that happens at the start. Uh, not saying that this track is unlikely or the fact that the cyclone is unlikely to happen, but just that the, the pace at which everything happens in this model seems to be a lot faster than, than what we'd normally expect. But anyway, having a look at this, we're expecting the cyclone or the low to form tonight uh, out here on the in the team or C. We're ex expecting it to push through to the west tomorrow, gradually deepen tomorrow, and become a tropical cyclone on uh, early Tuesday. And then following on from that, deepen, continue deepening as it pushes southwest along a ridge. And then start to push a bit more south. Look, to be honest, it's probably a very similar track to to what the one that the the one that we've seen now with Norell. So you know, and we're probably looking at category two, category three intensity. Sorry, down here as it's sort of to the northwest of Exmouth. So, look, this is one potential model output uh, of what could happen over the next week or so, or particularly over the next five to six days of this system. Now, you can see here the big thing here is between the 17th and the 20th, the cyclone pushes south or south southwest very very slowly. So it just sort of sits there, creating havoc with winds and seas and all sorts of things for three days. Now let's have a look at some other models which suggest this may not be the case. This is the UK Met solution and we can see that they don't even have the low forming until uh, until sort of late Monday night and they have it forming well to the northwest of the Kimberley coastline. They then have it pushing towards the south southwest or southwest forming into a cyclone here, a very weak one on the 16th of, of January, so three days away and then pushing it, rather than continuing it closer to the coast, they push it further to the west. Now, the interesting thing, at least with both of these models, the similarities between the UK and the GFS, both have it forming into a cyclone. UK, a much weaker system, Category 1, maybe 2. Uh, and the, the other similarity between them is the fact that they have the system 
moving quite slowly between the 17th and the 19th of January here uh, off the coast of the Pilbara. So, you know, once again, creating heavy seas. And, and, you know, the good thing about it, depending on how close it is to the coast, if it does this sort of slowdown, you could see some prolonged rainfall here falling near the coastline. If we check out the no gaps model, the no gaps model also has the system forming tomorrow night just off the coast here, or well off the coast, sorry, of the Tiwis and to the north of the Kimberley. And we see the system push sort of, and just meander uh, really, rather than push anywhere, just meander in the north Kimberley there for a while. Now look, no gaps isn't a very uh, reputable model when it comes to cyclones, but it is a model that we do consult. This is the Bureau of Meteorology's access model for Australia, or the regional access model, and this is courtesy of weatherzone.com.au, and you can see here the low forming uh, pretty well where the other models have got it forming to the north of the Kimberley coastline uh, tomorrow morning. Rapidly intensifying on Tuesday to about a 998, 996, uh, either tropical cyclone or, or very strong tropical low as it pushes to that southwest or in that southwesterly direction. And then by Wednesday, certainly a tropical cyclone according to this modelling, and continuing to push in a southwesterly direction, not really getting too close to the coast, not really allowing uh, uh, some more rain to, to hit the Pilbara coastline at that point in time. Circulation is too far offshore. So that's the next three days according to the access model. So you can see that there's a lot of modelling that is suggesting at least a very strong tropical low or a tropical cyclone. The thing that's put us into doubt about this system is the latest Euro model prediction, which has changed a fair, fair bit, especially in terms of the intensity of this system. Uh, it's sort of more putting in a low at that point in time rather than a cyclone. Uh, and let's show you that now. Okay, so this is the Euro tomorrow morning, and we see that there's a, just a broad general area of low pressure here uh, off the between, or basically anywhere in the Timor Sea and the Southeast Indian Ocean, really. It hasn't isolated it too much. Let's see how that continues. We see that on Tuesday morning, we get that whatever low pressure region was in this area has drifted towards the west southwest or southwest a little further to be lying off the Kimberley coastline. Now, see, this is where all the modelling uh, just varies so much because in three days' time, the European has this continuing to drift to the southwest, push south to the southwest actually reasonably rapidly rather than drifting. Um, but it still has a very weak system, 1,004 hectopascals. Now, I've shown you all the other modelling. The other modelling at this point in time has it at, at either a Category 1 standard system or... Um, a, a very strong tropical low. So there's a lot of variability there, not so much in its location, but in terms of its intensity at that point in time. The Euro still keeps this a very weak system at three days, whereas the other modelling is very intent on, on rapidly intensifying it. We see that by day four, the Euro plops it basically right on the coast between Headland and Caratha, but only as a weak low, not, not as a tropical cyclone. So now that's a fairly big change compared to what we were looking at earlier which was more of a tropical cyclone type system from every model uh, whereas now at least this is throwing a little bit of a spanner in the works but look overall the, mo the most favoured scenario is for this to be a tropical cyclone perhaps not to the, uh, the the conditions probably won't be as good as they were for Norel and so therefore we may not see anywhere near the intensity of Norel but at this stage most modelling is suggesting a weakish tropical cyclone in the lower end of the scales as it drifts to the southwest. This is the only model really that's showing some sort of landfall at the moment of that system. But remember this model is showing it as a weak low. Now if we look at the ensemble modelling from the European on day 4 and we see that even though the actual model itself has a tropical low a basically hitting the coast or, or on the coast between Headland and Caratha. The ensemble suggests that a, a weakish, maybe stronger system, like a tropical cyclone, could be lying off the coast uh, to the north of Exmouth. So, look, overall, it looks like the, the stronger the system becomes, the more likely it is to, to just 
sort of push off the coast, the weaker the system remains. Uh, so if it remains a tropical low, it's probably more likely to be closer to the coast. So for rain-wise, probably banking on the tropical low solution. But as I say, overall, models are pretty intent on developing a tropical cyclone, at least a weakish one. It'll be interesting to see how that evolves over the next 24 hours. So by next Friday, we start to see the development of a new tropical low uh, off the Kimberley coastline of about a thousand, or sorry, on the Kimberley coastline of about a thousand, a thousand hectopascals there, uh, and that's the that's what the ensemble shows. So this is tropical low number two uh, that we're now talking about uh, after the one that's that we're looking at forming in the next day or so. Uh, this is one that might form later on in the week or early in the weekend. Now the other area we start to watch this weekend, remember I said that Gulf Country is about to start exploding with activity around about this weekend. So that's the next spot we need to start watching. And so by next Friday, now we're switching to the Global Forecasting System Ensemble. Now I know it can get a little bit confusing when we're looking at two different models. So you will need to re recall which one we're looking at now. This is the GFS modelling. And so the GFS modelling, remember, keeps the low that we're looking at at the start. Uh, off the offshore and continues to push it to the west. Now what we're more interested in now, because that one's very highly variable, so we don't know, we can't look this far ahead for this one. So what we do want to have a look at though, is where the modelling is taking this new tropical low forming in the Gulf of Carpentaria. So this is where our focus now shifts to. So forget what's happening out west, because there's too much variability in it at this, at this rate. But what's happening in the Gulf is shown by pretty well every model. And so we do need to start paying attention to this because the variability of this solution is not very high. So that means that we really are confident that something will form in the Gulf of Carpentaria either late this week into the weekend. Now the GFS model, as it always does, uh, forms it and pushes it straight away uh, eastwards onto the eastern part of Cape York Peninsula to the north of Cape Melville, right here where my cursor is. Now, that's probably a little fast, as the GFS does like to do that. Uh, let's have a look at what the European Ensemble has it doing. On Saturday, the Euro really doesn't have it doing too much at all. It's just uh, it's just a general area of lowish pressure here, uh, associated with a monsoon trough on the weekend, but no recognised low pressure system. Let's fast forward to Sunday. Now by day 7 on Sunday, we see the global forecasting or GFS system confused now because it wants to keep the low either in the eastern part of the Gulf Country or the far western Coral Sea. So it's a little bit confused as to which solution it favours. And so you're going to get some of the GFS models are going to put a low or plonk a low or maybe even a weak cyclone off the coast of, uh, of the peninsula to the east and others are going to put it in the Gulf of Carpentaria on the eastern edge of that. So the Europeans are a little bit less confused at this time frame. Let's have a look what they've got. So the Euro is much more adamant on a more uh, Gulf Country solution. So it's got the low pressure system or low pressure area just in there in the southeastern parts of the Gulf Country um, and on the Monday, the Euro just drifts it a little bit to the northeast, uh, a little bit further up the coast. So rather than Carumba, heading more up around Pomparau, um, and sort of anywhere in the region between Weeper and Burketown, uh, it could be could be certainly in for a lot of rainfall um, if this sort of scenario eventuates. Especially if there's a, a very slow moving tropical low that sort of sits in here and just continually gets northeasterly feeder bands on the east coast. So you're going to see a hell of a lot of rain in the peninsula uh, and also probably anywhere anywhere to the north of Cairns with a low in that position. Um, maybe even as far south as Innisfail or even Ingham. Um, if the low drifts a little bit further towards the southeastern Gulf. So this is certainly the area that we're watching in the longer term. Look, it's very, very fascinating what the models are going to do with this tropical low over the next three days because I'll tell you what, there's very little time because if this thing forms, the models that are putting it into cyclone mode are putting it in in, the, in about two to three days' time. So it's going to form very rapidly, but if it doesn't form, 
we have another one that we could be watching in behind it a few days later. So there we go. We've got a hell of a lot happening in the northwest. We're then watching the Gulf Country because that really does look like it's going to fire at least into a tropical low. Now what will happen if this fires into a tropical low, if this fires into a tropical low or cyclone? Let's have a look at the rainfall projections over northern Australia. And this is what you get, folks. This is the next two weeks in rainfall across northern Australia. You can see here, these are your colour codes, and these are the rainfall amounts in inches. To get these into millimetres, you've got to multiply the number here by 25. So, if you've got any black shading, that's showing 250 millimetres plus in the next 15 days. So the next two weeks, we are looking at 250 millimetres plus in the black areas. Now remember, highly dependent on what this Gulf low does, but look at this, the entire Gulf of Carpentaria, the entire Western Peninsula, 250 millimetres plus. Cape Melville to Cooktown, 250 millimetres plus. Cairns, 150 to 200 millimetres. Um, just a phenomenal amounts of rainfall expected over the northern parts of Australia. You can see here the monsoon trough starting to edge down from Indonesia. It's, just, it's still going to remain in the far north, but I'll tell you what, with a low pressure area here and another low pressure area here, it's going to drag some very, very moist, fresh to strong northwesterly winds across the top of the country and we are going to see massive amounts of rainfall uh, and you can see here the North Kimberley coastline 250 millimeters plus Darwin 250 plus most of the top end coast extreme top end coast 250 plus even getting into the inland parts here uh, we're looking at massive rainfalls as well so look overall the drought is certainly starting to break and we're going to see some phenomenal rainfalls over the northern parts of Australia. As I say, not getting too far south, particularly on the eastern seaboard. The western seaboard really will depend on how how the trajectory of these lows goes over the next over the next week to ten days. We already know Norel's a lost cause, um, but the next one you know, if it hugs the coast and it stays a fairly weakish low like the European has it, you could be seeing 50 millimetres plus all through this region over the next week or so. But if it becomes a much stronger system and remains offshore, then most of the rain will too. As I say, fascinating to see what's going to happen here over the next, particularly the next one to two days, because we'll know by probably tomorrow night, maybe early on Tuesday, whether this will in fact be a, a tropical cyclone or whether the euro will be correct in keeping it a fairly weakish low. Um, and then if it does that, we watch the second one that comes off the Kimberley coastline in a week or so. Uh, so just an extremely active period, people. As I say... Let's get ready for a bit of rain, and let's be uh, let's be vigilant, especially in the northwest there, because you could be looking at multiple potential threats over the next week to two weeks, and also the Gulf Country, uh, north far north Queensland. Fantastic news for them too. All right, folks, thanks for watching tonight. We'll talk to you tomorrow.